All right, the topic is parallelograms. This is section 6.1 of the textbook. Uh, this section is pretty easy. Only thing that's really relevant in this section are the properties of parallelograms. Uh, the definition of parallelogram is a quadrilateral. with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now this definition we're going to use as one of the properties. Now after this we have a bunch of other uh, theorems I guess you can call them. Um, I'm going to just refer to them as properties. Uh, and I'm going to, in fact, use the definition as f the first property. Uh, the other properties include, uh, in a parallelogram, all of these would start with in a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So that's the second property. If you use the definition as the first property, this is the second property. And we have both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay, that's one, two, three, number four. Consecutive angles are supplementary. And the last one diagonals bisect each other. Those are the five properties. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. And diagonals bisect each other. Now, how does all this, or what do all this look like? What does all this look like? Here we go. Well, I'm gonna sketch something. Um, it may not look like a parallelogram. Some basic ideas here. Uh, whenever you name a polygon, you name it in a particular order, I'm sorry, in a particular direction around the polygon. So this polygon can be named A, B, C, D, or B, C, D, A. Okay. Um, I have some students who want me to put the letter C here and the D over here. But if I did that, it would no longer be parallelogram A, B, C, D. It would be parallelogram A, B, something else. Okay. So the order of the letter does matter. It is around the object. Okay. So in this example, this is quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Or I try to make it look like a parallelogram. But let's look at the properties here. Um, if you recall from previous lessons, arrows in a diagram like this mean segments are parallel. So here, segment AB is parallel to segment CD, and segment AD is parallel to segment BC. Okay, so this is using the first property. Okay, second property. Second property, we have those are congruence marks. These are opposite sides are congruent. So it's segment AB is congruent to segment CD and segment AD 
is congruent to segment BC. That's property number two. Property number three. We want both pairs of opposite angles congruent. So angle A with angle C, angle D with angle B. So we got angle A is congruent to angle C, angle B is congruent to angle D. Cool. We've got two more properties. Oh, we need another parallelogram. I don't know why I drew that one small. Let's see, the property was consecutive angle supplementary. Now, this is a little harder to describe. Um, so I'm going to give you an example. Okay, so we can say this is 120 and this is 60. It's consecutive angle supplementary. If that's 120, that has to be 60. If that's 60, then that has to be 120. And if that's 120, that's 60. If you don't remember, supplementary means angles add up to 180. So here, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 180, obviously from the given information. But even if I didn't have that information, I still could assume this, that the angles add up to 180. And all of these, whether you're given that information or not, should be true in a parallelogram. So angle A and angle B add up to 180, angle B and angle C add up to 180, Angle C and angle D should add up to 180, and angle D and angle A should add up to 180. This is what is meant by consecutive angles or supplementary. Angle A and angle B are consecutive angles. B with C, C with D, D with A. That's consecutive angles or supplementary. Next one, and the last one. In this one, you need diagonals. Diagonals are line segments that connect non-consecutive vertices. So here, I label the intersection as E. Now, a typical way to show that the diagonals bisect each other is by writing the congruent statement. So here, AE is congruent to EC, and BE is congruent to ED. And those are the properties. Uh, in the next video, I will give you some examples of how one might use these. And that's it.